Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian from Earth's Tribeca Trade Group, and this is your end of day recap for Monday, the 25th. Uh, some big moves and um, big moves in both directions today. Risk disclaimer in front of you everything that uh, we're going through in this video is for information purposes only, not giving any advice or recommendations. Please read the full risk disclaimer right there. So, a couple themes present. I mean, you know, we could talk about the good or the bad today because I think there was a little bit of both. I think there may have also been some, um, some end of month rebalancing that maybe they're just kind of doing it a little bit early considering that um that's the day after thanksgiving is the last uh trading day of the month you know normally we see like some month end rebalancing um and we can kind of just look at the uh the calendar here for a second but you know reminder that we have third i'll blow this up so you can actually see this a little bit here's the calendar for the rest of the week uh, we do uh so today's monday tuesday wednesday full days um Thursday's off and then Friday is a half day. So that's that could be why they're just kind of getting out getting out of the way of of um you know some of the month and rebalancing and maybe doing it early. I don't I don't know. That's just that's just a guess. But I think if you look at some things like Apple, um Apple really kind of accelerated into the into the end of the day. Um you know, again, look at the last like 10 minutes of the day. So, and I think some things went down, you know, like, for example, like look at Tesla at the end of the day. So I got out of to my Tesla that I got long on Friday. I got out of this. Um, and again, like just being disciplined here and just understanding um, as soon as this, this, uh, this broke here, um, I decided to, um, to get rid of the residual uh, position. You can see 385, which was just under my, uh, my, purchase price on Friday, but I did sell it on my, you know, I took several targets in it. Again, it's kind of the last uh, portion of the position, but I did sell it like right on the open today at 360. Um, that wasn't where I wanted it to. Uh, that wasn't my, my, um, the highest that I was looking for in Tesla. Um, just to kind of start off with this, I was looking for what, 364. So again, like, you know, these things, it's, it's a little bit of like, it, that's close enough. Like I don't have to get the exact target, but 360 was nice. I took some, some, uh, I took two profit targets on Friday too. And, um, and that's it. And we'll, we'll see how it builds up. So again, you know, the price action, I, you know, of, option flow and all kinds of other things the price action is that's going to keep me disciplined that's going to allow me to secure my profits and kind of and go from there so um that's the best way that i know how to do it so i want to talk a little bit about some concepts today too um which i will get to but um i want to just make sure i'm covering the big um uh, uh, the big themes for the day first, and then I will get to some of those concepts. So, um, for example, like one of the biggest things I think for the day was what bonds did today. Um, TLT was up two and a half percent. I don't really know the reason for it, but it doesn't matter. I know um, retail traders, they always want to know the reason. Oh, what caused the bonds to go up or what caused this to go down? Right. Especially when things go down, sometimes traders always ask for reasons. They don't ask for reasons on the way up, but they ask for reasons when something went down. Oh, what was the news that drove that? You know, a lot of times it's just it's just more demand than supply and, and vice versa. So um, but big move by bonds. I don't know if this really kind of changes the picture. And it's funny because I, t I talked about this specific concept uh, that um, that we were about 2.9 percent away from the bottom of the value area, which I would look for basically a trend change. And that's all that I'm kind of looking for. I'm not looking for like a one day trade. Right. Or to say like, oh, this setup is really good for a pop higher. Like, I don't do any of that kind of thing. Um, I mainly look for things that are going to basically change trend. And what I said was that this was kind of a difficult trade if you're looking for bonds to bounce, because you're going to, well, at least you know where there's resistance, which is another 1.2% up. So again, I don't know, and and sometimes you don't need to put on a trade. And I and again, I talked about this, and I did probably did about a forty five minute video this weekend for members. But <clears throat> I talked about how you don't have to figure out every chart. Knowing the basics helps here too. So you don't have to get a trade per se that that you know where you're going to profit on a bond move. But understand that if bonds go up, you know what's going to possibly what's probably going to move, right? And that's home builders, right? Home builders had a huge day today. Um, that was something that I talked about right off the open today when I saw bonds, um, you know, continue to go higher after the open. But you're going to have some resistance here, one twenty seven ninety one. This is ITB. This is the home builders ETF. Um, 
you know, I still think Toll Brothers is best in breed. Look at Toll Brothers make new highs on this today. And I think we're also seeing, you know, besides this, there's also some pin action, um, you know, meaning there's some other action in things like, you know, solar names, you know, bonds go higher and yields go lower. Remember, it's always an inverted relationship when bond, when TLT goes up, that, that means um, yields are going down, right? And you can kind of see too um, what yields did for today. So I'm just covering this topic because sometimes this gets lost in the shuffle, but look at the basis point move here. Um, across the board, yields were lower. All right, so this brings the the ten year down to four point two six. Um, you know, again, I don't think this really changes. You know, maybe you could draw a trend line here. So that's nice to see trends. Um, sorry, uh, yields go lower. Right, that will help things like solar. It will help things like home builders. Right, it makes it cheaper to buy a, to finance a house. So big moves there. Um, retail was has been huge, and you know, we started to see this last week. There's a lot of um, there was a lot of good earnings reports um, minus Target, and, but retail is kind of funny like that. You know, it, it's it's very trendy, and if if so, people make, in my opinion, it's one of the most confu confusing sectors for folks because just because like a Target goes down, it it doesn't mean that there's necessarily that the that the consumer is weak. It means that they didn't get the trends right. And again, it's, sometimes it's difficult to extract that information. And what I try to do in retail is to kind of say, okay, take a look at like five or six companies that reported. You know, for instance, like if pe people forget forget this very quickly, Walmart just reported previous to Target. And, um, you know, I, I had some people ask and legitimate questions. They're like, oh, geez, that was, you know, Target going down like this. This is really bad for earnings and really bad for retail. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. Didn't you just see Walmart reported really good earnings? So, you know, they it's it's hit or miss with them. So it, it could be that they're just they didn't execute properly. And really, retail does this. I feel like they're it's more sensitive um, that they're that they may not be executing properly. Um, you know, in terms of inventory management or have the right products that folks are interested to, it's a, it's much harder. And, you know, again, I'll say this and then I'll kind of move on from this, but it's not so much that, um, you know, a lot of times it's just the trend, they got the trend wrong, right, of what folks want. So again, it makes more sense to kind of look at, look at the ETF, look at four or five companies, and then you can kind of make that conclusion. And I think in the case of Target, they do this from time to time. They just really screw up or they mismanage. They could also just mismanage their um, projections, right? You come out with earnings and you give guidance and, you know, Target has a um, has a good history of that. But so what we're looking at here is this is the equally weighted um, retail ETF, right? Now, again, not every name is going to be perfectly um, weighted in here because um, they what floats around, you know, these these these. Um, ETFs rebalance quarterly. When is the next quarterly rebalance? Well, that's the third week in February. That's on options expiry. It's a, they line that up for quadruple witching. But you could see, you know, not every name is equally here. This is the column to look at for weight. Um, car, you know, so what do you notice is the biggest names um, in this ETF? Carvana, Warby Parker, Sp uh, Sprouts Farmers, Re R RVLV Revolve, which has done really well, Trader and um in the uh, in the Tribeca trading room now with the trade here in RVLV very nicely. But if you look at these, these what's the variable that floats around from the last rebalancing date? Uh, remember that the rebalance is quarterly, so December, March, June. So uh, did I say so? December, sorry, uh, March, June, and then uh, and then September. So September was the last rebalance. Um, what is, so what has transpired since September? Well, names like Carvana have outperformed. So they don't fix these shares until the next quarterly um, rebalance date. So, which again is the third week in December. So what floats is, you know, what's the variable that floats is price. So price goes higher, you become a bigger weight and an and, and equally weighted um, ETF until they rebalance it again. So regardless, there's no major skew. There's nothing that's like 20% of the ETF. Sorry, that's a long way to kind of give you that point. But overall, the retail group is moving higher. You know, and part of this may be because like it might be a little bit of a seasonal effect here. 
um, with Black Friday sales, uh, you know, people sometimes th they think that retail is going to be strong. And we did hear that from a couple of um, retailers last week that they were thinking that the um, that the numbers might be strong. Um, you know, then you're seeing a break higher in um, in retail. Right. And it's very interesting because this is also what we're seeing like in a lot of names that are finally breaking above, you know, recent highs. You know, we talked about Datadog last week. I did sell my Datadog today. Um, I might be doing that a, l a little bit early, um, you know, and data and I and I have this on in the TTG trend portfolio, but I had it on in two places and I unwound it today in my trading account. Um, I do. There is still a VPOC that, that's it's like halfway between this next one. I would be looking to add if it checks back, right? And, um, you know, I've been doing that in different places. I just had too many names um, that went like parabolic to the upside like this. It's a great move. And, and, and you know, over the last few days in data dog. So I, I um, so let me go through a couple other trends here. Well, we talked about home builders. We talked about retail. I didn't talk about solar, but, you know, solar can move off, could definitely move off the bottom as it is right now. It's been one of the burst performing sectors. It's going to have some resistance there at, um, at 3691. Um, what else in terms of, um, you know, movers for the day? Semis still continue to underperform. Uh, they finished lower for the day. Software finally took a little bit of, saw some profit taking. Again, there's nothing wrong with any of this. Down uh, one and a half percent from the open to finish red on the day. Um, energy finished lower. There was this, there's this story, um, you know, and I was just talking up energy too. So I, I guess I jinxed it to some extent. Um, oil drops as Israel moves closer to ceasefire with Hezbollah. I know, like, by the way, like, sometimes you just, you do this, right? You talk a lot about, you talk up a particular trade. Like, you know, I know Jim Cramer's making the rounds because they took a, a sound bite from him that says that he likes Bitcoin. Yeah, I believe I was, I had the, the uh, Med Money show on. I, sometimes I have his show on in the background. There was a caller who specifically asked him about the, the <laughs> MSTR. And I think he didn't want to answer that question after MSTR made made a, its parabolic move to the upside. So he said, you know what? Stick with Bitcoin. Bitcoin's the winner. But it's funny how people take the soundbite. And, you know, we've seen this happen in political stuff, too, with pre presidential candidates. But they took the soundbite of him, not the question, you know, because he probably wouldn't have come out and said that. Um, you know, unless I'm mixing up a soundbite, but I believe there was a caller who said, hey, what do you think of MSTR? And of course, he didn't want to answer that, you know, and, and instead he said, just stick with Bitcoin. But um, so I don't think he really jinxed it. Um, I think that, um, you know, these I think it's just, you know, trading 101 is things go up like this vertical. It, there's going to be a little bit of a of a. Um, of some consolidation, some profit taking. And I sold mine. I, I know I'll give you the uh, proof so that you could see this, but I sold IBIT last week. Uh, let's see if I can find it in here. Just give me a second. All right, so I sold mine last week, and I thought I might be a little bit early in it, um, selling it. But you know, look at the, you know, look at where I purchased it, and um, so so that was a that was a good trade for me. And um, you know, where where is this thing closed today? Right, a little shy of fifty four. So again, it, it, like I I didn't catch the absolute high, but I, I don't need to. I right? don't need to to. So there's a couple of concepts that I'm, that I'm trying to like go through in this video to say that you don't need to. It's okay that you you're not going to catch the very top. All right. I know everybody has the FOMO when they sell something and then they look back a couple of days later and they say, oh, my God, it went higher. Right. But the name of the game is just is making sure that you're making money right, and that you're that you are following your your risk uh, parameters. You should be a, like risk management should be your number one thing as a trader. Right? And I know that there's so much FOMO on different social media apps and so forth, um, because there has been some really big moves that, you know, can really define your year um, based on this month and the price action that we've seen. But at the end of the day, right, you have to do what's right. And there's a couple of concepts that I was going over here. I don't think I really need to go over the index charts. Um, SPY did kind of stall a little bit here at the previous highs. 
Um, so that's something just to be mindful of. And we've had a nice run over the last week. Um, we're also in a strong week, so I wouldn't be surprised if we grind higher. But I also wouldn't be surprised if we get a little bit of volatility. Qs we know are are lagging a little bit, even though they're still above all these short-term moving averages. And you know, still the performance for the Qs is fine. Um, month to date up four point seven percent just not as much as some of the other areas of the market, right? So again, it's tough to really complain about something that's up about five, you know, an index that's up 5%. Um, IWM, um, another gap up. And, you know, notice that uh, making a new highs, we have a little bit of an RSI divergence here. Um, again, sometimes these are these RSI divergences can be worked they could work themselves out. But I think this looks a little bit toppy in IWM. Uh, we'll keep an eye on it. It also took out this VPOC. Usually once we take out these virgin point of controls like this, right? we usually see a little bit of digestion. We usually hang around here a bit. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. And that's why I kind of sold some things. Also, um, and I talked about this concept earlier, but so here's here is the chart of um, this is, uh, uh, IWM is in the numerator and Qs are in the denominator. So you're looking at a relationship, right, of what's been going up versus what's been going down. So notice this IWM has been kind of basing um, a little bit. Now you may think, okay, that's fine. You know, we're going to, rotation's fine. R rotation, um, some people say rotation is the lifeblood of bull markets. But but one thing that I've noticed with IWM and Qs, perhaps it's because um, the components of Qs are larger, um, you know, let's say in SPY than the components of IWM. If we bring in the SPY chart, right, and say what happens when IWM really outperforms, when there's a lot of rotation on the tape, right? So SPY is the yellow chart here. Notice what's happened. So if you go back to July, when IWM was really outperforming the Qs, what happened thereafter? Right, the market didn't actually like that too much and corrected a bit. Right, um, we didn't. Now again, every time is not part. You know, so this was a little bit more gradual. Um, we didn't really get that much of a pullback. We got a little bit of a pullback, but um, you know, I would just be a little bit cognizant of that. Right, so let's go back to this period for a minute, just on the spy chart. This was seven sixteen. So let me bring this up. So th this is where this was, right in here, right? This is where IWM was kind of leading the charge. And then all of a sudden, we began to, be, began to break down, so, right? So the, we hung around here at the 50-day moving average. This was a nasty rejection um, on, uh, not, not on big volume. But then we proceeded to go lower. We, and we had a correction of about 8%. Right, eight percent down, or I don't know. I'm not measuring this exact percentages, but somewhere in that ballpark. So, does it make me a little bit nervous that we're, that we're seeing the similar type of move? It does. Now, there's a point that I want to make here too. Is you know this? I don't know. I don't think that this is going to repeat the exact same way where we're going to get an eight percent drawdown. We're also so when you look at something like this, you want to look at it with other factors, right? You don't want to ever look at one particular thing and make a whole bunch of decisions, right? Just like I was talking about with the target and and talking about oh, target goes down. That doesn't necessarily mean that the consumer is weak, right? There could be other reasons for that. So. I would take this with with other factors. Are we in a weak seasonal period right now? No, we're not. We're, we're in a strong seasonal period. So it could just be that we take a little bit of a rest or things, you know, and, and again, it could be after this week because this week is pretty is pretty strong seasonally. But I think, you know, so let's think forward a little bit, right? And let's look at a couple other charts. You know, IGV had a little bit of a reversal. Look how much IGV is up, right? If this comes in a little bit, like for the next week or so, that's not necessarily a bad thing. And I think if you're, um, if, if you've been trading for a while, right, and if you've got some experience, um, sometimes you actually like market dips a bit, right? Because they, 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 um, they remove all that hot sediment in the market, right? All that, you, you know, where no one's buying puts and no one thinks that the market is going to go down, right? Once you have a little bit of a reset, then things can kind of um, digest and then make another run of it. So 
I would be okay at this point um, with, you know, a little bit of a market tip. Again, it doesn't have, that doesn't have to happen or at least some digestion because I think we're running out of setups for, you know, look at, you know, for example, app loving, right? Where else is this going to go at this point, right? It's gone basically from 160 to 320. So it's doubled um, since the last earnings. And you'll probably find a lot of names like this, right? I find, I'm finding a lot of names like this. You know, A-Lab has been very nice, right? This was a name that I traded last week. I did, I think I sold out of it last week, but, you know, it's a question of, um, are you going to, or, or are you going to have to buy some underperformers? Now, I don't really love that trade of buying things that are in downtrends, but you know that's another, you know that's another particular outcome that you could have. The bottom line is nobody has a crystal ball. What you do is is you make decisions, you know, based on risk management and whether or not you think you're you've you were holding a lot of risk. So for me, you know, I was holding a a decent amount of swing trades coming into the week and I reviewed all of this in the uh, member um in the member video and I said, "Hey, I'm probably going to start unwinding some of that exposure a little bit because, you know, I've been carrying this amount of trades now for the last couple of weeks. So let's take some profits. And I did that this morning. Um, you know, luckily I was able to bring up my trading blotter and I know most people aren't going to do this for you. Most people on Twitter, they, they don't, they only tweet about the winners. They don't, they, you know, they don't tell you basically, they don't give you the full picture of what's going on, but, but this is what I did today. You know, I mentioned Tesla sold this one. Um, and I was holding, you know, keep in mind, I'm holding some slower moving names and I'm holding some faster speculative names like Joby. And I didn't even sell Joby at the high of the day. I sold it at eight fifteen. right? This is a nice two day trade for me. Right. And I'm, and I'm out. I don't have a lot of conviction in that name, nor do I even know the name really well. So a lot of this is just their trades, right. Versus, you know, holding something that I'm more confident in. Um, I took TD, TDD off this morning. Right. You know, so, so bang, bang, bang. And I took off one loser. You know, I didn't like how this name looked. I looked at this name over the weekend too. And I said, you know what? I don't love the chart. There's other names that I want to be in, but, and then you pick and choose. So, me unwinding a good portion of, of trades, because I think I unwound about six or seven trades today. Um, that doesn't mean I, I'm getting out of everything, right? You know, PCOR was another one that, that's the last piece of PCOR today. I got out of that one, but I'm still holding Upstart, right? Um, I think that Upstart could continue to go, uh, can continue to push higher, right? And I'll, And now I'm also freed up to watch some of the names that are pulling back a little bit. Shop was one name, you know, and I'll look at this name tomorrow. Um, I just didn't have the capacity this morning because I because I was trying to manage a bunch of positions. But this is a this is an important concept, by the way. So I did not one of my favorite um, setups today was Shopify. Why didn't I get into it today? Right, right off the bat. Because I didn't have enough capacity. Um, you know, I I'm busy managing existing positions. So if you unwind some, if so, if you have too many positions on that, what helps you a lot is unwinding some of them so that you could focus on the road ahead and, and perhaps focus on some new setups. Um, I also like how Dash behaved today, right? Look at Dash went out to new highs, right? Whereas a lot of uh, high momentum names kind of pull back a little bit. So this is another name that I'll be watching tomorrow. And then I'll be watching for some names that kind of pulled back. I got out of GEV on Friday. Right. Look at look at what GEV did today. Right. Again, just some there's some profit taking on the tape today. So I will look at this name tomorrow, right, and see how it holds the 20 day moving average. Right. And also if it holds the bottom of its value area for for um you know, notice it came down and took out this feed box. So I have an alert set right around like 337. Another name too that I haven't been in, in a while, my trading account. I still own it in, um, but um uh, FTI is another name I'm watching on, on a pullback. So it's, it's actually like, you know, to me, and again, like the concept here is like, if we start to kind of pull back a little bit, I'm in really good shape now because I've, you know, taken profits and things that I think are a little bit extended. And now I've got that dry powder to watch for some things pulling back or watch some relative strength, like I mentioned with Shopify and, um, and DoorDash. So um, this is just trading 101, guys. Um, again, I, I'm showing you things that probably uh, a lot don't um, because, you know, 
there's folks on Twitter that they're insecure and they will, they won't talk about how they're managing a loser. They'll just pretend that it, they never had it, or they're only talk about it if it goes back up. Right. Otherwise they just won't mention it. Right. And that has to do with, you know, there's just, there's a lot of insecure traders out there. I, I know I, I try not to follow ones who only tweet about, you know, the, the ones going up and so forth. You know, the other ones that they talked about had option activity last week, they won't mention, right? So there's all kinds of games being played. But what I try to do is just kind of give you a, a sense of, um, you know, how real traders manage risk and how you have to make some, some tough decisions from time to time. And I would rather make those decisions on a day like this where versus like a day where if we do get some type of like washout day, um, it's that's a painful day when you're selling into, you know, when the market's down that day. So, again, um, I reduced risk because I thought it was the right thing to do today. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know if we continue to go higher, um, but I just wanted to kind of free up some capacity that um, so I've got more dry powder and can get into some new fresh setups. All right, guys, that is it for today's um, to, for today's. Uh, uh, video. I hope that helps. Um, if you can, like, put a put a uh, a like on YouTube or whatever. And you know, if you like this analysis, this is what this is what I try to do every day in the Tribeca Trade Group room. Um, we do have a special. I, I tweeted it out over the weekend for Black Friday. If you want to get involved, and you can get involved in our community. I think our community does a really good job too at um, showing trades and showing setups and showing what's what's moving and so forth. Have a great night, everybody. See you tomorrow.